Till a few days ago, I was thinking what everybody else was thinking, that the Russians were not using a lot of precision-guided munitions in Ukraine because their stores were limited. Then I received a message with just one acronym, SPV-24. At first, I didn't know what it was referring to. So I did what everybody does in 2022, I ducked a gun it. Is it a word? And the article at the top was enough to plunge me into a very deep rabbit hole. So it seems that the SPV-24 is a Russian ballistic computer that is credited with an extreme accuracy. So I referred to my usual sources and I found two types of articles. In the first case, there were press releases that were just translated and reported with pretty much no changes. Yeah, not very informative. But the other type was like, if this is possible, then everybody else using PGMs is an idiot, which I have to admit was a slightly more articulated position. So at this point, I knew I had to look into the Russian sources. And thanks to Google Translate, a very curious picture emerged. Yeah, but first, let's make sure that we all understand the context. Modern aircraft have two modes to release unguided gravity bombs. Continuously computed impact point is a mode where the armament computer keeps calculating the impact point of the weapons if they were released now. In its simplest form, the system uses the aircraft motion and the height above the target to calculate the impact point. This information is usually presented as a pepper or a crosshair on the head-up display. The pilot flies the aircraft to a point where the target is under the crosshair, then it releases the payload. The system may consider several additional parameters. First of all, the ballistic characteristics of the weapons being used, but also wind, humidity, temperature, or specific conditions of the release system on the aircraft. This mode can work with different attack trajectories like level bombing, dive bombing, and the parameters may be acquired automatically, or in older systems, they can be entered manually by the pilot. Continuously computed release point is a more sophisticated mode that is not only useful for unguided weapons, but it can also help optimizing the trajectory of guided weapons. In this mode, the first step is to designate the target position that is by a bombing radar or some other sensors. Based on the target position and the aircraft kinematics, the system calculates where and when payload needs to be released to hit the target. The information is usually presented as a line on the head-up display with a symbol placed on the target and in some cases also a countdown to the release is also shown. So the pilot will fly the aircraft in the direction suggested by the system and the computer will decide when to release the weapons in order to maximize the possibility to hit the target. Level, toss and loft bombing accuracy can greatly benefit from this type of approach. CCRP is helpful with guided weapons too. For example, a laser guided weapon will be released when uh, the possibilities of locking onto the target are maximized and the ballistic trajectory is ideal. These systems have been used for a very long time and has been implemented on pretty much every type of aircraft whose mission is to hit some ground targets. Obviously, the complexity has grown from a manual input uh, system to something which is pretty much entirely automatic, like in modern aircraft. Is the SVP-24 just another system like this? Or is it different? Well, it is not. The SPV-24, which is actually nicknamed Hephaestus, is an assembly of several subsystems whose job is to implement a CCRP system, but a system on steroids.
So the SVP-24 can be connected with the aircraft sensor, either radar, infrared or TV to designate the target. But it can also receive the target designation from another aircraft, from a NOAX, or from a forward air controller on the ground. And this process is completely automatic and in real time. It doesn't involve the pilot entering any data. The system integrates satellite navigation, which means GLONASS obviously, but we can safely assume that it's also going to use all the other available systems. It is using satellite navigation to be very, very accurate about the position and the kinematics of the aircraft and the target. If combined with a ground controller, the aircraft can receive local data conditions like wind, extremely important, but also humidity, temperature, and if the target is moving, it can receive direction and speed of the target. And the update is automatic and in real time. On the basis of this extended data set, the computer calculates and gives the pilots the best trajectories to attack the target. For example, it can choose a high altitude option or a low altitude option or, uh, or toss bombing rather than level bombing. Then the pilot makes its choice and the computer automatically releases the weapons. So the system is more accurate than any other ballistic computer because it's used an extended data set to calculate the firing solution. This seems to be the secret source of the SPV-24. When the system in its current form was first tested in Syria, the Russians were enthusiastic because they had never seen anything like that. Accuracy is measured with a parameter called circular error probability. For example, if the CEP of a system or anything for what matters is 50 meters, it means that 50% of the shots fall in a circle of 50 meter radius around the target. There have been unconfirmed reports that the SPV-24 demonstrated a CEP of 13 meters, which is definitely much better of any other system of this kind. Obviously the CEP depends from a lot of conditions, but even this is the best CEP they could get from the system, it is still a remarkable result. Observers on the ground reported at least one confirmed case in which an aircraft equipped with the SPV-24 was capable of hitting directly a tank with an unguided bomb, something which is incredibly difficult to obtain. The Russians were so happy with the system that contracts were signed in a hurry to equip almost all the air-to-ground platform of the VKS. There have been claims from Russian officials that the system is as accurate as precision-guided munitions. Actually, if the system CP is 13 meters and the JDAM CP is 10, 12 meters, well, I can see where the claim is coming from. So, is this to be believed? Well, no. It can't be. First, because I believe that the JDAM is definitely much more accurate than that. Second, it is impossible to work around the law of physics. When the payload leaves the pylon, it will always have a minor lateral velocity component. And during the fall, the wind will influence it in a way that can be irregular and very difficult to calculate. Every time free fall bombs are used, it is also expected that they will have a dispersion. There's no way around. It is indeed likely that a system like the SPV-24 that is using an extended set of parameters to calculate the trajectory is going to be more accurate than the average armament computer, potentially even much more accurate. Still, it's hard to believe that it's going to reach the same level of accuracy as a guided weapon. So, nothing to see here? Well, no, because a system like this can still be valuable. I don't know the numbers, but probably a salvo of dumb Russian bombs is still four or five times less expensive than a JDAM kit. Dumb bombs are relatively cheap, can be serially produced, they are low technology, they don't depend from foreign suppliers, so they will always be available. If they can reach a decent level of precision like the SPV-24 seems to provide, they are still an excellent bang for the buck. Western Air Forces today hardly use unguided weapons, so a system like this for a NATO country 
would not be particularly interesting. But for a mid-tier air force, well, it's definitely something to consider. And probably the presence of a system like this is the reason why we are seeing so many dumb bombs being used in Ukraine. But there is still something unclear. Who sent me the original message? <laughs> If you got so far, I'm sure you liked the video. And if you like the video, there are several other videos about the Russian Air Force and Russian aircraft on the channel that are going to appear beside me. A great thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by being members or on Patreon. Remember, there is a new way of supporting the channel by purchasing aircraft models built by Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage and at no extra cost for you. So thank you very much for watching and see you there.